One of the vivid memories is coming, my brother and I coming in from the Windsor side, and the horse and carriage entered from this side, and the bridge began to tremble. My brother was younger, and he ran, turned around and ran out of the bridge in fear. But I had heard about horses making bridges tremble, so I kept coming. I was very brave. I could ridicule my brother after it was over. <laughs> we used to pay two cents to come one way, but we, since we lived over there, we paid three cents for a round trip. You'd think toll rates would have gone up in 100 years or more. But the fact is, the toll Ed Patterson and his brother paid as boys was exactly the same as it was in 1796, at least for pedestrians. That was the year the first bridge was built here on the Connecticut River in view of good old Mount Escutney. I guess it has. It's, no, it was always that way, apparently, yeah. because cows could so easily wait it even. Oh, it's really beautiful now. People who know all about this bridge, people like Virginia Colby and Ed Battison, use superlatives when they talk about it. The Cornish-Windsor Bridge is, in fact, the longest covered bridge in the nation, the longest two-span wooden bridge in the world, so far as we know. And as a classic of Yankee engineering and architecture, it's unrivaled. A lot of what we know about the history of the four bridges that have been built on this spot is due to one fact. They were toll bridges. And it is the records of the toll takers that tell us the details of daily life. The first toll bridge was built in 1796 by a group of local investors. They picked a good place. The Cornish Turnpike connected to the Croydon Turnpike and then to the Amherst, New Hampshire Turnpike, a major route in those days. In 1838, the toll taker counted 14,000 sheep and 2,200 cattle on their way from Vermont farms to the markets in Boston. That first bridge was destroyed by a combination of winter ice flows and spring floods, and so were the two built after it. Altogether, the first three bridges lasted not quite 70 years. The fourth bridge, the one we admire today, has been here 124 years and counting. As Virginia says, the admonition to walk your horse or pay $2 fine no doubt helped. Well, uh, you couldn't gallop across uh, because it creates the momentum and it shakes the bridge. But uh, that's why you had to walk the horse. It's the same as an army marching across a bridge. Uh, you can't do that. They have to break ranks. No toll taker ever recorded an army crossing the bridge. But in 1825, General Lafayette paid his toll, as did a party of wolf hunters in 1831. And when the famous sculptor Augustus St. Gaudens moved to Cornish, an art colony grew here. One artist offered this droll advice to a visitor. In Cornish, we wear our oldest clothes, and when we go to Windsor, the little Vermont village across the river, we wear nothing at all. There is no mention of that in the toll takers' records. Ed says President Woodrow Wilson got to know the toll taker when he established his summer White House in Cornish in 1913. The president crossed it quite frequently because the summer capital was in the Windsor Post Office and Courthouse. And the woman who took the toll in those days uh, seemed overawed by the presidential party, except on the last day when the president was going back to Washington. Of course, he went by train from Windsor. And she smiled. And someone in the party said, did you notice the smile? And the president said, yes, it was like the breaking up of a long, hard winter. <laughs> The state of New Hampshire bought the bridge in 1936. Vermont didn't want the responsibility. By 1987, the bridge was sagging 18 inches. Engineers gave it a lift and replaced a lot of old wood, but they didn't change its structural design at all. Now the spans arch 18 inches, the way they're supposed to. It was sagging the other way, and probably somebody next week will write to the newspaper and say it's already sagging in the middle. <laughs> But that's a lot of water under the bridge, and as Ed would say, perhaps one or two chickens as well. Yeah, and in the 1927 flood, I was just a kid, but there was a 
uh, chicken coop came down over near the Vermont side, and it had a lantern and some chickens in it. And apparently, the owner of the chicken coop had been moving chickens out, and when he he went away with a bunch of chickens, and the thing floated off down the river. Well, it it of course it crumbled up when it struck the bridge, and nothing came out the other side. It, it was recognizable. I suppose feathers came out, and the lantern probably sank. It wasn't lighted when it came out anyway. <laughs> So the bridge connecting Cornish with Windsor will be here a long time yet. You ought to walk through it some afternoon. Some say the best way to see it is from the inside.